Good morning, all you ladies and gentlemen. We are from the English class. We are reporting today on reported speech. I do hope you are all well and fine in these trying times, and you are setting a precedent for your grandkids one day, telling them how fabulously you went through this COVID nineteen challenge. But let me just first recap here. The work that I did give you when the school closed were um, two worksheets for language. And then we also did Composed Upon Westminster Bridge, um, The Sleeping Black Boy and The Call. That you needed to finish by now. And we will mark it as soon as we do get back to school. Then today we are starting with... Lesson number one, which is reported speech. Now, what is reported speech? Reported speech is when a conversation is being reported. First of all, you have a conversation, and then somebody else might be telling it around the kitchen table or over a phone to somebody else, what you have told them or what you have discussed. Now, there's a few things that we need to remember with reported speech, but you will also remember that I did give you this time word chart. And reported speech basically also uses the time word chart, where you will see that if it is in the present where they are reporting, I will use the first column of the verb. If I start reporting in the past, he said he wanted to know, he asked, I will use the second column of the verb. But then the rule also says that if you report a conversation that someone did have with you, but what happened to them already happened, then whatever they said in quotation marks will have to change to the last past tense we did, and that will be the past perfect, and you will get a had with your verb. Right, now let's have a look at the first page. Um, reported speech is to tell someone else what someone told you. They did not hear the story themselves. So if they start reporting in the present now, um, he says that or she asks if, then we can consider it to be present because my introductory verb is in the present. If it already happened and you have to start with he said or he asked or he wanted to know, these are called your introductory verbs. And they tell you, is it going to be in the present where you're going to tell your story or in the past? Now, if it is in the present, sweeties, um, when I report in the present, he says, he wants to know, he asks, then what the other person said, their words, their direct words, which is usually in quotation marks, is going to stay basically the same. In the same time it is happening, the only thing that will change is my pronouns. I, because Lily is speaking, it's a girl, so the I will change to a she. Lily says that she, and because she is one person, we always add an S for one person. So Lily says that she enjoys sweets, and it will then stay the same the rest of the sentence. But when I report in the past, he said, he asked, he wanted to know, he inquired if this or that happened. Then everything that the person said, their words in quotation marks, will change to the past. Everything that can change, okay? So in this case, um, like I will explain to you further when we get to those, it's usually your pronouns and your verb and a time with that will change to the past. You can imagine, every day I eat, but I can't say yesterday I eat. So it will be every day I eat, yesterday I ate. Every day I enjoy, but yesterday I enjoy. I'm going to start reporting with a past tense. Lily said, 
and then I put in my that so that my sentence makes sense. Lily said that the I will change to a she, so that is where you will get your first mark. You notice that that must change. And enjoy is present tense, but I'm starting to report in the past, so that needs to change to the past. Every day she enjoys, yesterday she enjoyed, so I changed that to the past as well. Sweets, and therefore my introductory is in the past and I have changed my verb to the past. So therefore everything is happening in the same time. You will remember in class I told you the English speaking kids don't quite always grasp that you need to change it. They need to know when it is happening and change it to that time. More is future. So more is sal ek school to gaan. Ne? The same year. In English, exactly the same. You have to figure out when is it happening and then you change everything to that time in the past. Right. But what happens now if what the person is telling the other person over the phone or whatever, if that has already happened? Not a problem. The rule says whenever you start with your introductory verb and it is in the past and you start reporting in the past, then what will happen is what the person said must change to the past. So if it is already in the past, enjoy it. What now? Easy. I've explained it to you right here in the beginning. If it is already in the past, it will change to the last past tense, the past perfect we did, and it will get a had being added to the verb. So, let's look at the sentence. I enjoyed sweets, Lily said. You start reporting in the past, but now when you go and look at the words that she said, you pick up it's already in the past. So the rule says it must change to the past. So you will get a had with it. So Lily said that she had enjoyed sweets. And then I've still changed it to the past. Even if it's just the further past. It starts with the past introductory verb. The story was in the past, but the rule says when I start reporting in the past, that must also change to the past. So I just went and I placed the past perfect auxiliary verb in front. There are a few things that we need to look at. And you can copy this down in your book, all these notes, okay? First of all, you look at your introductory verb to see when you report, past or present. Then everything the person said in quotation marks, their own words, that can change to the past, for example, will then change to the past. You need to always underline these things, the verbs in the speech, like we did here, when I said, I enjoyed sweets. Enjoyed is my verb. I underlined that. Then I go and underline the pronouns. Those are the words instead of the people's names. Here, in this case, it would have been I because we didn't give Lily's name there. We used the I. If there are any time words like today that can become that day in the past, tomorrow, the next or the following day, yesterday, the day before, the previous day and so forth, I will underline the time words. And then we also have words that indicate time or place. Like here will change to there. This will change to that. These will change to those. I will give you a list of all these possible changes um, at the end of this. If it is a question, um, ach, if you report it into reported speech, you will see there's always a mark allocation at the back. If there stands a three, it means that there are three possible things 
that will change or two possible things that can change in this one the she and the had enjoyed so that one would have counted two marks in some cases it's three or four marks but then you need to go and look for these things that you possibly missed out on that could have changed from the present to the past then when you rewrite into the reported speech please note that your quotation marks will fall away okay you will not use them once you rewrite the speech because then it is not their own words anymore you are telling it from another person's perspective if one person says more than one sentence sometimes there is a long speech you do not need to start each one with she says this or he says this he says this he says this you can just use conjunctions um, as long as the words that need to change to the past or whatever changes you need to make the pronouns that will change because those are the things that you will get marks for it's only when another person speaks that you will change for example it's Mary speaking in the first one and then the general commented so then the general you will start in a new line with what he said okay if you ask a question you can also use the question words for example why can I not have a sweet John asked it will change to John asked why why he could not have a sweet and there you have used your question word why as again then certain expressions you will see in some speeches some people say oh dear or no why yes and so forth you will not say um, John said oh dear we have to go to the party but you will rewrite that sentence uh, John exclaimed emphatically that they why did they not go to the party for example you must use a different word or words to explain the meaning or the tone or whatever feeling you are experiencing when you see that sentence for example um, um, ouch there's the example I gave you ouch there's the thorn pricked me John exclaimed you will rewrite it like John exclaimed instead of ouch you will explain it painfully John exclaimed painfully that the thorn had pricked him why had because John exclaimed is past tense pricked is already in the past and the rule said like we discussed because I start with a past word, what he said must change to the past. So if it is already in the past, I will go and put a hat with it. Had pricked him. All right. Then I will also use my last column, the third column of the verb for um, reported speech. Now, the list of words that I've given you are these. And I hope that you will be able to see this because this is how they change from the present to the past. And then your assignment. Let's go and have a look at it. Complete the following. I am going to smash the record today. It will start with Peter's set, which is in the past so everything there that can change to the past will the I is the pronoun I'm going to smash is your verb and then today is my time word so those possible three things can change to Peter said that I will be a boy so Peter said that he am is and or I can see here is in my present so Peter is one person is will change to was in the past Peter said that he was going to smash the record and today changes to that day okay 
Now I would like for you to please copy these as well so that you can do them in your book and then before we start the next assignment we will quickly mark these. Thank you very much for your time. I do hope that you have a fabulous day and enjoy doing your homework in a different manner. So goodbye from all of us here in the COVID English class. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.